Give it's me clarity good. on y'all relationship. I had a relationship with Pac. Yeah. You know. It's kind of hard because I haven't haven't really told the whole story. Okay. You know, the the one of the things that that's very interesting that I that I've never really said before is that when I first met Pac, when we first met, I was a drug dealer. And that was and so to, to just give you I won't get into the details of it cuz I'm going to write a book about it, but just to give you like that's how we started. Then as I was coming out, something very bad happened to me. As I was coming out of the life, he was going more into the life. And so, and I've been having kind of an existential crisis around Pac because I was coming out, he was going in. And, you know, there was a point in which we met and then we kind of were going our separate way. And I just felt like, okay, God, one day you're going to do for Pac what you did for me, which is you, you, sh- you saved me. That's what I'm talking about right there. Shout out to Lonnie Light. <laughs> I sent out a seed last night and said, hey, Jada's coming tomorrow. And last time she was here back in 2017. Woo, six years ago. She manifested what we're here to talk about today. Worthy out now. Damn. The memoir. 2017 is when she talked about that. And you see the internet is exploding off of every word she says. Mm -hmm. They said, well, she said this, she said that. We had that in that interview. And I've been seeing Jada ever since. And I've been waiting for her to complete that story full circle. Mm. So now who do we have here? Mm -hmm. Well, we have one of the most honest, courageous, transparent, Somehow controversial, <laughs> Somehow. you know, outspoken, um, independent thinking, a powerful, spirited person that you're ever going to meet, right? And none of us, um, none of I, I've never met a perfect person, right? You know, I've I've yet to other than my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you allowed to say that? Other than my daughter, I never met a perfect person, but I. <laughs> I, and I've never met a person I couldn't learn from. Yeah. Mm. So what we have here today is an extremely established thespian. Give her a big round of applause. Absolutely. Who's been a part of some really stapled um, programming that has helped shape and mold the minds of our community. I'm talking Different World, which was incredible. The Matrix, the Nutty P- uh, Professor, Menace to Society. Mm. We had the Hughes Brothers up here. Um, Bad Moms, The Matrix, Res- Resurrection. Mm. I can name... Uh, so many different pieces of work, pieces of art that she's been a part of. Uh, daytime Emmy Award Come winning on. talk show yeah. host. Woo. Are you kidding me? Red Table Talk. Name one of the uh, 100 most influential people in the world in 2021. Yeah. She's been the CEO of her family because uh, black women are when it comes to our family. <laughs> Real talk. And she's uh, reared some amazing children that I do nothing. I look in all of them. I've never had a full conversation with any of her kids. I just want to learn by their lead, you know, uh, but I've always greeted them. And your husband, um, like LL Cool J is to me, is uh, one of my inspirations. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's a hero to me. Yeah. You know, he um. he's he's had to be in the front line for a lot of we yes. celebrate 50 years of hip hop. Will Smith has been 10 toes down and had to break through a lot of barriers and a lot of doors so that we can do what we're doing today. That's right. Same as LL. Yeah. Uh, Will was he always put his family up in the forefront yeah. of his life. At a time when people didn't always do that. That's, that's right. That's so true. That's right. Right? That's right. Come on. People didn't always talk yeah, about their families right. like that. Will has done that. Shout out to Will for that. Absolutely. <laughs> and shout out to your family. Um, you guys have given the world your all. Yeah. And none of us can say that. Right. That deserves a round of applause. And the world has given you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they have. Yes, good and bad. Good, good, and, bad. good and bad. For better and for worse. That's right. That's what comes with it. That's what That's comes, what comes with, with it. That's what comes with it. That's just part of the game. Right. Mm-hmm. And I want to welcome her to the show right now again so she can finally answer that question. <laughs> Jada Pinkett Smith is here. Yeah. yeah. Welcome oh. back. <laughs> hey, Damn, yeah. I didn't know it was 
2017. Damn, mm -hmm. it's been too long. You, you were up here. I remember that day like it was young. You said a lot in that interview. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a lot of questions people are asking you today because of the memoir right. that you spoke about in that interview back in 2017, 17. right? Yeah. When you hear yourself talk about that moment being in, in I guess, the Baltimore area yeah. and having dealing with, you know, in the streets like yeah. that and then saying, you know, I'm going to put it all in a book. Yeah. <laughs> Had you started writing it yet but at that time? No. No. Mm. I hadn't even started yet. So you said it that day on this, sh on this show. Yeah. And today the book is out, y'all. <laughs> Yeah. Damn! Wow! <laughs> Six years later. Six That's years powerful. later. Is that manifestation? That's manifestation. Yeah. 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 For sure. I knew one day. You know, I knew one day. But and I knew in order to tell my story and as well as you know Pac's story in which it relates to my story, it would have to be in a book because there's too much history, too much context for me to. You know, even to just talk about it here on a mm -hmm. radio show, mm -hmm. I, you need too much time yeah, you do. to break it down, you know. So in a book, you know, I really get to draw people in to my life, you know, and set it up so that people can have, like, more understanding mm -hmm. and have that history and context. Why, mm -hmm. why is that important to you, though? Why did, why did you need people to have any understanding? Why does that matter? Well, that's why it took me so long to write the book, okay. right? Because I needed a reason to write the book besides, hey, here's my story, Yeah. right? Worthy is about really me sharing all the years that I didn't have that sense of self-worth, right? Going from feeling unlovable to lovable. Mm -hmm. And in that, really sharing the journeys that made me feel lovable those journeys that made me feel unworthy and then how I had to walk myself to that consistent place within myself that safe place within myself that is constantly telling me you are worthy mm -hmm. so to me that was a worthy reason to share my story yes right and it just so happens that Pac is part of that story absolutely mm -hmm. yeah yeah um how do you decide is there something you didn't include in this book? Oh, it's a whole lot I didn't include in this book, right? Wow. So, okay. okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the next question. <laughs> Do I even you need know, to ask it? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, there's, this is just, I, I know it seems like it's a lot of life because it is a lot of life in the book, but mm -hmm. it's very streamlined. Mm -hmm. There's so, like, layers and layers and layers and layers. There's no way I could have put it all in one book. There's mm -hmm. no way, mm -hmm. you know? So, mm. you know, there's definitely other books to come. I mean, even Will and I are thinking about writing a book. We were talking about this last night, writing a book called Don't Try This at Home, mm -hmm. where he and I <laughs> kind of sit down and talk about our specific journey together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will said that? Yeah. Oh, man, tell Will I said what up. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> I'm a fucking Will fan, man. I'm a fan. <laughs> Will came up here with... Um, Martin Lawrence. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And did that freestyle to brand new. Did you see that? I did. Jada, you ain't got to lie. I did. You did I saw see it? it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you I saw, saw that? It. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was my childhood dream yes. to get Will to do that. Um, all right. Since I played that clip, can we talk about the, 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 that moment that you had to sell crack? Oh, yeah. Because when you brought that up, I was like, what? And then you left us on that cliffhanger. What were the circumstances? Like, where were you at in your life? Mm -hmm. So. I was about four, 14, 15 years old. My mom was really deep in her addiction, mm -hmm. really deep in her addiction. And it was just her and I. You know, that the, the two stable people that I had in my life, which was my grandmother, passed away when I was 13, right? Mm -hmm. So she was like a safe haven for me. And then my bonus father, my stepdad, who she was married to at the time, they decided to get a divorce. Mm. Right. And so then my mother and I, for the first time, we were thrown into a life together with just she and I. And she just she wasn't available. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so much so I didn't know whether my mom was going to make it or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I really felt like I really got to go out here and figure out how to gain some security, some safety. Right and how to just build something for myself that no matter what happens, I'ma be okay. Word. So, where I come from, we didn't have 
doctors and lawyers that you could look to and go, oh, I'm going to go for that. I need something immediate. We had the hustlers. Mm -hmm. They had wads of cash. They were also street CEOs. They had businesses. They had sub shops. They had barber shops, nail salons, shoe stores. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, I'm trying to have that come up. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I, I was like, I'm, I'm that kind of personality. I mm -hmm. mean, once I put my mind to something, I know I can make it happen. And so just being steeped in that environment, mm -hmm. I was like, that's going to be my way out. Mm -hmm. you was know? doing that. Was doing that. You know? And I mean, it was... You know, when you're when you're immersed in an environment like that, you you you're not you're just there. That's just what it is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And even though I went to Baltimore School for the Arts, now you have to remember, I wasn't the only one at Baltimore School for the Arts who was hustling. Oh no, nah, yeah, people hustle in high school. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but was Pac hustling? Not at that time. Not at that time. No, right. because Pac wasn't Pac wasn't from Baltimore. Yeah, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, and so. Um, yeah, he didn't. He didn't get into that. What what level were you a boss? Or I feel oh, I, no. no. You were, oh, so you're, yeah, I'm like I'm like at whoa, 14. Whoa, like, what whoa, are you whoa, 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 yeah, nah, You nah, was a king nah. pan, Jada. Stop, no. I wish. Jada I was Escobar. I was trying to. I was trying. <laughs> I was trying. You tried it. I was trying it. Okay. Didn't quite make it. Did you get robbed? I would have robbed you. If I you got tried. robbed. I got. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen, I am lucky to be here today. I talk about it in the book. Mm -hmm. I talk about two instances, and they, and they were, don't even get me started. Those were just the two most extreme instances okay. that I had. But yeah, I got robbed. Wow. Yeah. That's, is that what, what made you quit? Uh, that, well, I'd have, to, probably the second time, Uh huh. you know, when I was like, okay, this isn't meant for you. There was I, the, this is actually a signal coming your way that that you not built for this, mm -hmm. and so and I would have to say once my mother found out, cause she found some leftover product in my room that she Oof. thought I was using. Okay. Right, and then she heard from through the grapevine that I had gotten you know robbed in Cherry Hill, and Cherry Hill, mind you, is like it's a peninsula, mm -hmm. one way in, one way out of the projects right mm -hmm. and she was like what the and she was like you getting up out of here because I had gotten a scholarship to North Carolina School for the Arts mm -hmm. a very small one but I auditioned and they wanted me to come but I wasn't going I was going to stay in Baltimore mm -hmm. and just keep trying trying my luck in the mm -hmm. streets and my mother got me to hell up out of there she was not playing with me so I would say that she probably saved my life how long wow. did how long did your uh Dope dealing career last, would you say? <laughs> maybe about maybe about two years. Two years? Two Damn. years. Two years. That's a lot of surviving. Yeah. It's two years. Two years. What do you what do you say to your kids about that? Oh, I I tell my kids everything. Mm -hmm. So I've I've been told them that story. See, that's how I set up like Listen, when I'm telling you something, mm -hmm. I'm not telling you something just to tell you something. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you why I'm telling you this. Yeah. I lived. Di, 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 di. It's like, oh, okay, mom, yeah. So mm -hmm. when I tell you, watch your back, Willow. When I tell you, I need you in this house at eleven o'clock. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. This is why, you know. And the, and so your kids go, okay, you're not just trying to parent me like that parental, just trying to strangle me stuff. I was like, no, no, no. There ain't nothing out here for you, Willow. After eleven. Mm -hmm. Uh, ain't nothing out wow. there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, Is there an age as a parent that you think is best to share? When did you share with the both of them you know, these you, parts of your life? You kind of have to, You kind of each child is different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it just depends on, on that particular child. But I think with Willow and Jaden, just the both of them at the same time. But they were, they were kind of young. I think... Jaden might have been about 14. Mm -hmm. And then J Willow was, what was she, two years younger than mm -hmm. Jaden? Yeah, so, wow. yeah. Wow. This is fun. <laughs> <I'm saying>. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting a whole tour. <laughs> yo, yo, this is so much fun for me. Uh, Jada Pinkett Smith is here. DB, you wanted to. Yeah, first of all, I want to say I love Demon Night. That's one of my favorite <laughs> movies i just like repeat um i was having a conversation about luck and some people 
you know, def- depending on what side of the fence you you sit on, feel like luck either is or isn't part of somebody's success. Mm-hmm. Was there a moment in your career, maybe early on before the fame and the marriage and everything like coming to you where luck literally was just like how you got an opportunity and no- nothing had to do with who you knew or anything, you know, like that? Luck. I, I, I think I would say me going into different world and auditioning for that guest role and Debbie Allen being in Mm. the room was Uh luck, Uh right? And her, you know, seeing me. And that day she said, I'm not gonna give this guest starring role to you, but I wanna create a character, a series regular. I went in for a guest role and walked out as a series regular. I'd have to say with luck, and being prepared for an opportunity, mm-hmm. right? So you gotta yep. be prepared for luck, mm-hmm. right? So you, luck is being at the right place at the right time. Like we can't always, like, we can't always create that. I, I consider that luck. But when that luck comes your way, being prepared to really take, because we, we got luck all around us all uh-huh. the time. Yep. All the time. Yep. Do you have yep. the eyes to see it? Do you have the preparation to take it by the horns, right? And so I would just say with a bit of luck and preparation, yeah. Can you speak a little more in depth about Debbie Allen and your relationship with her? She's an amazing individual who's she been is. on this show. Yeah. And, and, and I want to take this opportunity <laughs> to put the spotlight on all the folks yeah. that she's touched. And she, I mean. Yeah. Forget about. I mean, she's she's like our surrogate mom. Yeah, mm. you know, it's like Debbie. Debbie is like she she raised me in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. You know, she's until this day. Mm-hmm. You know, and so without her, you know, I, I even on on like a different world. Like she just she looked out. She was making sure we all knew how to write scripts. We all had opportunities to to direct. She, when Pac got me um, hooked up with Menace to Society, she made it so that I could, you know, do that movie because I was contracted by Different World. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you weren't really allowed to. I wasn't allowed allowed to. to, uh, Exclusivity. Yes. Yes. It's like you're Mm -hmm. under contract. Okay, so mm-hmm. you can shoot a movie when this show is down. And Debbie Allen said, oh, no, no, she's going to do this movie. And she went and fought for me. You know, so mm-hmm. then she helped launch my movie career. There you go. Right? Debbie Allen. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> I'm going to live forever. I'm going to learn how to fly. Fly! Anyway, that was yeah. beautiful. All right, going to Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jada, it's so interesting the responses mm-hmm. to your interviews, to their book. Um, on one side, which is the side that I reside on, I can really feel that this is in service to your soul yeah. and in service to the souls of others. That's right. And that you want to use your story to, in your own words, show other people how they can recognize their own worth. Yeah. Then we have another side that's like, Jada, why are you emasculating your husband? Again. Again. <laughs> why is this all this oversharing, et cetera, et cetera? And the question that comes to mind for me is, is something only sacred if it's private? Can something remain sacred when it is shared publicly? And also, what is the definition of oversharing for you? So... When we're talking about our community, it's a really deep subject, right? Especially when we're talking about our black women. I'm talking about my sisters and I'm talking about myself. It's a very complicated thing because we have been taught to um, take care of everyone else first, Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of times it's one or the other, right? It's like... We oftentimes we don't have permission to share our stories because our stories are connected to other people, mm. right. right? Right. And so we we are taught that we're to protect everyone else by all means necessary, mm-hmm. right? And so it gets complicated because there's so many complicated dynamics within the black community as far as black people. Yes. and how we relate to each other and what we have to deal with in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And so 
sometimes it's like just be quiet so that you know you're not supposed to be telling your business you know putting your dirty laundry out there and it's like but what we have to understand as a community is that when we don't share and we don't share what we are learning on our journey then we stay stuck Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and so we have to be able to just step outside of these boxes, step outside of these ideas of what we believe keep us safe because these are the ideas that keep us stuck, Mm. right? And check it. I know it's really hard. I was pissed too when I realized that my relationship would never be perfect. Yeah. I was (laughs) mad as hell. Yeah. I was mad. Mm Mm-hmm. So much so, I was like, bunk it. I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So I get it. So I want to acknowledge that first. It's hard when you really want to hold on to an idea. It's hard when you want to hold on to a fantasy. But at some point, we got to get to real life. Right? And what I am finding in this journey with Will is a deeper, more authentic kind of love and relating than that picture perfect idealistic unrealistic way of relating right and I feel like when we try to hold on to these ideas then we never get an opportunity to see each other Mm. none of us are perfect just like Sway said I'm not perfect Will's not perfect our relationship's not perfect but there is some beauty and perfection in that imperfection. Mm. And that's all I'm trying to share. This is not a tell-all. It's not a tell-all? Hell no. Nah. It's not a tell-all. This ain't a tell-all? No. <laughs> this ain't a tell-all. This ain't a tell-all. Can you imagine what a tell-all to you would be? <laughs> yeah, it ain't coming out. Nah, this ain't a tell-all. Wow. You know, and that this is me telling all my stuff. Yeah, but it ain't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? It's a tell-all. It's, let, so let me change that. It's definitely a tell-all on Jada. Yeah. Yes. It's a tell-all on Jada. Mm-hmm. But it ain't a tell-all on nobody else. Because I'm not here to tell nobody else's journey. Yeah. I'm just not. Right. You know? So I think that the way some of the headlines were set up, it looks as if, you know, I'm putting some stuff out there that maybe Will's not. And let me just let everybody know. Okay. Will has been in complete partnership with me on this. Uh-huh. Yeah, I already bet on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's been in complete partnership with me on this. You know, this is not something that's like, oh, she done wrote a book and he don't know nothing. It, it, it's none of that. Yeah. Like, that's my dude, you know? Uh-huh. And so, but I get why people are having a bit of a challenge, you know, but I think everything is just going to be what it's going to be when it's going to mm. be, right? But at the same time, I I I got to walk my walk. Yeah. And for those of those who want to walk with me, come along. And for those who don't, I understand and I got love for you too. It's okay. Jada Pinkett Smith, I know you got to go, but I got to take I promise the listeners they could get in here, Jada. I hope you don't mind. Okay. Okay, now Bear He's from Long Island. Bear, did you read the book? Bear? Well, the, I'm here. I'm here. You got the book? This is why we're the book, here. The book The book just came out today. I ordered mine yesterday. I pre-ordered it yesterday. Nice. I got it today. So I'm going to be listening. I'm going to be reading the book. Okay, good. All right? I'd yeah. like to hear that. I appreciate it, man. You want to say something to Jada? Woo, I'm getting ready to get emotional because Jada, I have been a fan and I've had followed you since day one from a different world. I'm actually watching it now because I've always watched my old shows. God. And there's always something I wanted to say to you. When you did Jason's lyrics, <laughs> my, my birth name is Jason Alexander. Oh, wow. So you was taking so that when, to heart. <laughs> yes, I was like, so in my, I'm going to respect, I love Will. In my head, I'm like, oh, that's my girl. That's my okay, girl. okay, Bear, I'm going to let you go right yeah. now, man. I ain't going to do that wait, to my wait, man, Will. Come on, dog. I can't <laughs> no, I said, I said with love. I he love said love and respect. Love. Okay. Yeah. He said love and respect. He wanted to share his respect. truth. <laughs> All right. When she walked into that, when she walked into the store, the body TV, and he came out with the TV and introduced himself, 
he said, my name is Jason, Jason Alexander. Alexander, yeah. And I was like, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. But <laughs> that I'm, definitely, crazy. I'm definitely going to read the book. I just got it. It just, it just came into my, into my thing today. Oh, I hope so you I'm enjoy it. All right, man. I am. Okay, and brother. I don't. I don't. No, 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 no. Man, I'm not I'm not you're a citizen, you, man. Get, get out of here. Sway in the morning. Oh, gosh. That's what DMs are for. Can't hog the whole conversation. <laughs> Trishelle is from Missouri. How you doing, Trishelle? Hey, yes. Trish. Hi. Hey. Hi. I'm actually straight in New Orleans, so thank you for doing your movies in my city. Hey. Although I live in Missouri. They, um, I, thank you all so much. This is such a blessing to be able to, to be here. Thank you for. I'm so glad I got through. I just want to say I've been following you also for years. Um, thank you for, for sharing women's stories, black women's stories. Yes. Silence is a tool of oppression. And yes. they're, they're, when, you, when people want to silence you, you have to wonder, like, well, what's in it for them? And usually it's, you know, something is in it for somebody else when they don't. Want. We have to break some of these patterns in black communities where women are suffering while trying to take care of everybody. Mm-hmm. And, there you go. and then carrying all that pain. There you go. Come on now. And I have, I have one other thing I, that I, that years ago I was dating. I was just dating and uh and i was really struggling and you were on and maybe it was oprah show and you said you know if will and i don't work out i don't know i have to try <laughs> something new you remember that I and do. I want to tell you, that day was pivotal that day was pivotal in my life i honestly diversified my portfolio there you this go gonna sound crazy today is my anniversary i've been married for 14 years wow 14 years, and i tell that story even when i do speaking events about how literally, and I'm married to a woman, so I'm not trying to shade people or change right. them, but I've been with men my whole life, and I honestly just opened myself up to possibilities of all types, right? Right. Um, and can you believe that? Today wow, is Trishel. our anniversary. Wow, right. good wow. for you. Ooh, the Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Yeah. Love always wins. Trishel, yeah. you a citizen. A so. in the morning. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Tracy, G- yeah, thank you. Love y'all. Thank you. Too. All right, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith is here. You know her time is limited. Worthy out now. Yes, sir. Um, y'all get this memoir. Uh, I want to say I watched African Queens, which is a very powerful series on Netflix. Yeah. That received a lot of unnecessary, just <laughs> ignorant ass backlash from folks who was trying to rewrite history. Yeah. How did that? It's amazing. I'm my daughter. I made everybody watch it. How did it turn out? How did it do? It did well. Right? It did really well. Okay. So yeah. there, there's more African queens we can cover. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And we we have been in talks about that too. Um because there are more African queens that we can cover, but that was a really important project for me. Uh-huh. And I was really glad that um I was I was able to make that happen. What did you make of the backlash that that people didn't oh. think it was proper representation cuz of skin color? Yeah. yeah. Listen, I already knew yeah, I, you know, I already knew. I already told everybody, even at Netflix, I said, "Check it. This is going like this is going to disrupt a whole mm-hmm. lot." But like I said, I got to stay on course. There you mm. go. Yeah, they didn't want Cleopatra to be black. Yeah, <laughs> it was deep. <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. Um, I want to. Um, I know you have to go, but come back. Yes, I will. I, and it won't be. It won't be. You know, it won't be as long as it's been for sure. Please, come yeah. on. You always got a home here. Tell mm-hmm. your kids they're amazing. We do theme songs every morning on this show. <laughs> right. Everybody got a theme song. Oh, okay. Like mine is hers is Annie Up by M O P. <laughs> you know, it. he got a song. What's your song called? Uh oh. I'm that nigga. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mine is Kalani's is. One blood. You One know, blood. DB does something every day differently. And mine is, what more can I say, what Jay-Z? More what more I can I say? say. Yeah. You know? um, and Heather B's mm-hmm. is Icon. Oh. Yeah. So we play Icon. Every day. Every day. Yo, your kids are amazing. Uh, you have an amazing family. I know you're on this tour. Good luck with, with everything you're Thank doing. You. You're I doing. You're doing it. right. I'm enjoying it. Thank you. Okay, stir them up. Make them talk. Keep them talking and stir them up. You, go. you got a beautiful home. You can rest your head in. Yes. Come on. You ain't got to trip on all of that. But I want to uh, conclude this interview. When when you bring up Will, you know, our, we dug deep and found something he said years ago. Mm-hmm. That's consistent to what y'all been saying today. Um, and we're going to end the interview with that. But I want to say thank you for coming up. Uh, we didn't get to do a lot today. But okay. we'll finish next time, Absolutely. all right? And hug that guy for me. I will. Okay? I definitely will. You want to say anything in closing? I just want to say, you know, thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's what's up, Jada yeah. Pinkett Smith. This is what Will said. Will Smith had to say about them. You need to make me happy. 
and it's her responsibility to make her happy, and then we're going to come together and build on that happiness. Will Smith is continuing to get candid about his marriage to Jada Pinkett Smith. The 53-year-old actor is featured in a new cover story for GQ and discusses the revelations in his upcoming memoir titled Will. The Philadelphia native reveals that Jada was not the only one engaging in other relationships outside of their marriage. He explains, quote, we have given each other trust and freedom with the belief that everybody has to find their own way and marriage for us can't be a prison and I don't suggest our road for anybody. I don't suggest this road for anybody, but the experiences and the freedoms that we've given one another and the unconditional support to me is the highest definition of love. Anything that I need to make myself happy, I will present that to my wife that I need that to be happy. Divorce is not an option. We're going to be together. So we're going to figure out how to be happy. Yeah, and then we, yeah. But it is the first time that we heard that Will and Jada may collaborate on a book. Yes. yes. Don't try oh, this at home. home. What a title. All right. Jada Pinkett Smith, thank you for coming. <laughs> by. Thank you, guys. Absolutely.